Brother Johnny, you want to take it on? I just came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just came to love the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. I just came to praise him. I just came to praise him. I just came to praise him. I just came to praise the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. I receive my sight and now I am happy all the day. Alas, 
then did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head for such a work as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I had done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart had rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of On that chorus again, come on, ushers. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Brother Joe, lead us in a word of prayer over offering. Will you please, sir? Because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. 
Let's all stand and let's sing this chorus one time. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Amen. Hallelujah. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. We just give thanks to you tonight for all that you've done for us, Lord. Lord, for there's not enough hours in the day to tell all that you've done for us and how you've blessed us. Lord, I thank you for the Crusaders. Lord, for their ministry. I thank you that that they're able to go where we're not able to go, Lord, and reach those lost souls. Over 600 this past year, Lord, and we just rejoice that they are being used, Lord, in such a way to reach those that are lost and are going their way to hell. Lord, and we know tonight there may be someone here tonight that doesn't know you as Savior and as their Lord. Lord, I just pray tonight will be the night that they step out in faith. Don't worry about what anyone else has to say or think, uh, no matter what age, Lord. As long as they understand that they are a sinner and are in need of a Savior and know that Jesus is the only way to you, God. There's no other way but through Him. Lord, I just ask for your anointing tonight upon each and every person's ears that they may hear and upon their hearts that they may receive tonight, Lord. For I know there are many needs here tonight. Lord, there are many that aren't here tonight that are indeed spiritually, emotionally, whatever it is, Lord. You know. And Lord, those that are out sick, we just lift them up to you tonight and we just ask for healing to go forth in the name of Jesus. For you are our healer, our deliverer, our Savior, first and foremost. Lord, I just thank you for the Spirit's presence here tonight, Lord, and I just ask for a mighty move of the Holy Spirit here tonight to move upon our hearts and Lord again I just ask for your anointing upon the crusaders as they deliver your message in song and through the preaching of your word Lord just use them in a mighty way and bless them Father everywhere they go protect them build a hedge round about them Lord see that they get to where they need to go Lord to reach those souls for you Lord, we pray these things in the name of Jesus, knowing that you hear us, Lord. And we believe, and and we're going to receive those things, Lord, which you have promised. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. sound of a mighty rushing wind and it's closer now than it's ever been I 
I can almost hear the trumpet as game of sounds and call at the midnight cry will be gold. When Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children, the dead in Christ shall rise to me. around me I see prophecies fulfilled me oh, and signs of the time they're appearing everywhere I can almost hear the Father As he says, I go get my children at the midnight cry. The bride of Christ will rise when Jesus steps out. Blessed face I shall behold With the saints of old The half will then be told When my feet touch the streets of glory well, When my feet touch the streets of glory 
When I travel my last weary mile Will he hold my trembling hand When before the Lord I stand Will he say my child well done Crown of life you now have won When my feet touch the streets of gold And if by chance some happy morning you should miss me, don't you weep for me because I'm gone. I'm gone. Yeah. I'll be at the feet of the one who died for me when my feet touch the streets of glory. When my feet touch the streets of glory, when I travel my last weary mile, will he hold my trembling hand? Will he say my child well done Crown of life you now have one When my feet touch the streets of glory When my feet touch the streets of glory When I travel my last weary mile Will he hold my trembling hand When before I stand Will he say my child well done Crown of life you now have one When my feet touch the streets of gold when my feet touch the streets of gold. Come on, give the Lord praise, church. If by chance some happy morning you should miss me, don't you weep for me because I'm gone. I'm gone. I'll be at the feet of the one who died for me. Touch the streets of gold. Will my feet touch the streets of glory? When I travel my last weary mile, will he hold my trembling hand? When before the Lord I stand, will he say my child a crown of life you now have one? When my feet touch the streets of gold, when my feet touch the streets of glory. When I travel my last weary mile, will he hold my trembling hand? When before, when before the Lord, the Lord I stand, will he say my child, my child, will down the life you now have one? When my feet touch the streets of gold, when my feet touch the streets of gold. Are you looking forward to that day? If you can't say yeah, you need to get saved. And then you'll be shouting, yeah! Amen, amen. Oh, it's been a beautiful day, hasn't it? Woke up and the sun was a shining. See, the sun always shines on me. Hello? Because I know him as my Lord and my Savior. So I wake up to the sun every day. Oh, it's been a wonderful day. We had the opportunity to go over to Cornerstone and to sing and to share with the folks over there, the residents over there. We had a good time over there, and, uh, you know, we had the opportunity to tell them about Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's what it's about. Uh, have you enjoyed, enjoyed Miss Ashley Talley over there singing? Yeah. And standing and sitting and standing and sitting next to her. Uh, uh, Mr. Jonathan Talley, have you enjoyed him? <laughs> Amen. Back there in the back, taking care of the sound and the video. He's talked so much. Mr. Stephen Hayes, have you enjoyed him? <laughs> Amen. Penny was sharing with me that uh, had 13 in the late ladies' prayer time this afternoon. So what a joy, and I know you all enjoyed her. Uh, have you enjoyed my wife, Penny Talley? And also, again, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, the last room down on the left. Is that right? Before you go out the door back there in the fellowship hall uh, there at start at six o'clock so 
for the ladies tomorrow night. Okay? So you come and be a part of that. Amen? This man over here, I have known all of my life. He says he used to look like this, but I don't think so. But, but he does a wonderful job leading the group, does a wonderful job preaching. And have you enjoyed this preaching? He does a wonderful job leading the group. But make welcome my dad, David Talley.
Now you know what goes on in the back of the bus. <laughs> Amen. God is so wonderful. Amen. That kind of started with Ashley playing the mandolin, and uh, we was, uh, I think, over in was it Mississippi or someplace? No, it was up. That place. Yeah, it was on had up the, the way. Had, the roof. had a church. Yes, of course. <laughs> That's where we stay. Had a church, and uh, but. Uh, we had the, the dobro on there and then all of a sudden I'd gotten it out and started playing with it and the mandolin uh, Ashley said I, I need something that I can play and so we had a mandolin there at the house and so we put it on the bus and me and John are all the time we're picking it up and we make noise on it and uh, you know because it fit in the bunk with us because we could lay there and you know just like we were really doing something and uh, but Ashley took it serious and she began to learn and God began to bless. Amen. And doesn't she do a good job at that? Amen. We've got a fiddle on there and uh, man, if you've got a dog problem, call me. I, we can take care of that. Uh, but uh, God is so awesome. I, I, you know, I, just, I was th thinking about all the things that we've... Uh, have gotten to see God do and a lot of times we we say well we did this and we did that but my friend it's it's nothing to me it's nothing of John or Ashley it's all of God and he says if you will just submit yourself surrender yourself then I'll use you I got tickled. I, uh, I was thinking about bro Brother Ed, and, and as we was on the cruise, and <laughs> he had gotten on the cruise, and he, he was done with relationships. <laughs> he, had, he had done tried to, to find a, a godly woman, and he thought he had found her, and, and he had been down to see her several times, and they'd gone out, and it just didn't work out, and he was just... When we, he got on the bus with us to leave in January, he said, I'm done. I'm done with relationships. I'm just, gonna, I'm just not going to fool with it anymore. And that's when God can work. Last day of the cruise on there, he met Heather. And, uh, and now they are engaged to be married sometime coming up. And so... Um, it's just amazing when we say, I'm done. That's when God says, that's what I've been waiting on right there. Amen. And, and I'm just thankful for that. And maybe that's where you're at in your walk right now. You think, well, I've tried this and I've tried everything else. God, I'm done. That bus that's sitting over there, that's a testimony of that of me getting out of the way and saying, God, I'm done. The business that we had, the RV business back years ago, I was accustomed to trading for this to get that, and I would trade this to get that, and, and I'd end up with what I wanted. And when we begin to pray about needing another bus, God says, okay, let's just see. I had an evangelist friend of mine that uh, he was a, a mentor of mine and, and I'd been searching for another bus and I had found one in Cleveland, Texas. Oh, it was going to be perfect. Had the sleeping accommodations just like we wanted and I had called the guy and we were making arrangements and he was going to take two of my buses and he was going to 
carry the note till I could get it financed. Oh, I was excited. So I called Brother Jack, my evangelist friend, and I told him, I said, Brother Jack, I said, I want to tell you what God's doing. And I told him about the bus and went through this long spill. And I said, I even called the bank to see what they would do. And I finished talking. He said, now, what'd you say? I started through the whole scenario again. He said, no, the last thing. I said, I called the bank. And he said, Brother Dave, I done told you, when God gets ready for you to have a bus, he'll buy you a bus. You won't have to worry about going to the bank. And I said, all right. I just got frustrated. At that point when I said, God, it's yours. When you get ready, I'm done. It was about two weeks later. Jonathan being the very good student that he was in school. He was homeschooled and so he would go to the shop to work. Do his homeschool. That's a whole long story right there but we'll move on from that point. But One day, one morning, it was Friday morning. He come in there and he said, Dad, I got something I want to show you. And I said, what? And he brought his computer in there and set it on my desk and I said, now if it's a bus, I don't want to see it. He said, I said, no, I don't want to see it. I said, son, you want to go see Ashley, aren't you? Yes, sir. I said, well, we got things to do. I've got to get this done. I've got to get this done. So him being the considerate son that he is, he sets his computer and leaves it there. Screen open. <laughs> walks out. I'm sitting there busy, taking care of business. Got things to do begin to look at that computer huh well yes that's just what we're looking for everything to the T what I'd ask the Lord for and I, him standing around the corner and when I got it directly in front of me he jumped back in there and he said what do you think <laughs> and I looked at the price of it and I said son that's a misprint I said, you know that's supposed to have a one in front of it. It had $59,000 on it. And I said, that's wrong. It should have been 159000 So we talked about it, and he's, and I'm, we're talking 90 miles an hour about this thing. So I emailed the guy. A bus broker in Pennsylvania had this bus. So he calls me back. And within about five minutes he calls me and he says uh, hey what do you want to know about the bus and so I begin to ask him some questions and I said where is this bus at this guy is in Erie Pennsylvania and so I, I figured well it's up there and so he said um, some place called Monroe Louisiana I said Monroe that's not but an hour and a half from me he said really and uh, he said, do you want to talk to the owner? I said, well, sure. I'd like to ask some questions. So we did a three-way call. This was Friday afternoon because we had to get ready. Ashley was marching at the football game. We had places to be. And so we uh, started making some calls. And so I talked to the guy and I said, hey, we're doing a, we've got two services this weekend, a homecoming in Falk. And when we finish that, we'll be done on Sunday afternoon. Reckon we could come down and look. He said, no, can't do it Sunday. He said, I'm moving. I said, all right. So we made arrangements to go down Monday morning. So called a bunch of friends, and we began to pray. So a friend of mine that lives in North Arkansas, he said, uh, Dave, you want me to come down and go with you? Because he knew about Series 60 engines that's in that bus. I said, yeah, that'd be great. So after service that night, we had a prayer service at our home. We gathered and prayed, sought God's face. Moving along, we went Monday. Told the guy, I said, well, I'll give you 55000 for the bus. He said, well, I'll take that. Words of wisdom from my wife, she said, Okay, you've got 5,000. Where are you going to come up with the other 50? <laughs> she said, well, at least we could keep it 30 days. 
I said, I don't know, but God said he's going to take care of it. So I'll, I told the guy, I said, look, I want to give you 5000 down. I'll pay you the rest out. I'll have it paid in full in, in uh, 30 days. I said, and I want to carry it home today so I can do some work on it. He said, well, I can't do that. I said, well, we're going to go eat some breakfast, and we're going to pray about this. We'll be back. By the time we slid out from finishing eating, that it was about 10 o'clock that morning, my phone rang. And this guy says, bring me the 5000 put the insurance on it, drive it home. Went and got it, drove it home. Emptied our other bus out, put their stuff in this. We left on Wednesday. Seven days after we got that bus, it was paid for. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In seven days, our other bus sold, which took care of the other portion of the bus. See, when I got out of the way, God said, now, now I can do something. And the day, the day that I said, I'm done. Guess what went for sale? That bus came on the market. That very day. My friend, God's got a plan. If we'll just get out of the way. If we'll surrender to him and, and we'll say, Lord, it's all about you. It's all about you. That's when he says, now, now I can use you. Maybe there's something that's in your life right now that God is saying, hmm. old self's got you right in the middle of everything, self, self. Maybe you just need to tell self, I'm done. I'm going to serve the Lord in whatever. I'm thankful that I have a God that's never given up. We sang this song, I don't know if it was Sunday night or which one, but I'm glad he didn't throw the clay away. Amen. Cause he doesn't throw the glee away Over and over He molds me and makes me oh, and Into his likeness He passes 
I want us to sing this song and then uh, God has spoken to me about some things and uh, I want us to take a look at in his scripture. And I love this song that Ashley wrote it. It only took four. I'll never forget the when she first started finishing the words to it and the chorus and it came alive. She began to share that. And as you listen to this song, I want you to listen to the accounts. And I want you to focus and let God speak to you about looking around at your surroundings of people that are looking for four people who might bring them closer to the Lord. The earth that Jesus was coming to town for me at her that friend and picked him up off the ground the crown was so They couldn't get in the door But with faith they wouldn't give up It wouldn't mean crippled anymore Cause it only took four To bring them For the lame man to be healed, then to walk out the door with the crown all around him. He picked the man on the floor. It was there. Cause it only to form A preacher was preaching All the healing power of the Lord He was praying for others When soon One for friends who brought their crippled friend from home. They had the faith he could be healed. And he got a touch from the To bring their friend to Jesus For the lame man to be healed Then to walk out the door With the crown all around him He picked the man
It was their fantasy accounts talks about four individuals that saw more than just the the outside they saw something that would lead someone to the Lord you have your Bibles go ahead and turn over to the book of John chapter 6 I want to ask you a question tonight. Are you gathering fragments? As I begin to study and I begin to look this afternoon and the Lord begin to show me this, I'd never seen it before, but I want us to read verses 1 through 12 and then let's see what the Lord has got for us tonight. If you'll stand in honor of the reading of God's word. John chapter 6 verse 1 it says after these things Jesus went over the sea of Galilee which is the sea of Tiberias then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased and Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat with his disciples now the Passover a feast of the Jews was near then Jesus lifted up his eyes seeing a great multitude coming towards him he said to Philip where shall we buy bread that they may eat but this he said to test him for he himself knew what he would do and Philip answered him and said 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that everyone might have a little one of his other disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. And there was much grass in that place, and so the men sat down in the number of about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, his disciples distributed them to the and he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. Pay attention to verse 12. And so when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you that it's true from cover to cover. And Lord, I ask you right now that we'd gather fragments. Lord, that nothing would be lost. And Lord, I ask you right now that you would use me in any way you see fit. Thank you for the worship that we've had. God, the songs that we've sung and how our hearts have been touched. 
Now, Lord, speak to us. Speak to us and have your way. And, Lord, if there's one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that accept you before this night is over with. Now, Lord, we love you. And we want to raise you high, that lift you up that you're so worthy of. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to ask you, are you gathering fragments? We've heard this story, this testimony of the 5,000 being fed. If you've been in church, you've heard it all of your life. If, you're, if you love to study the Word, you've read it. But this afternoon as I sat down and began to, to look through, I saw something I've never seen before. I've read this passage of Scripture over and over. When we think about going out and telling somebody about Jesus, when we think about in, in ourselves that we're going to go out and we're going to share the gospel, we're looking for certain individuals that feature, that, uh, feature certain criteria that, that look like something that we would feel comfortable going out and doing, that we would go out and meet them and that they look like us, they talk like us, and so what, what we find is, is we don't have a problem with distributing full loaves, amen? We don't have a problem with distributing things and that look like what we think they ought to. So I want you to stay with me here for just a moment. These disciples, when Jesus spoke to them, he already knew what he was going to do, amen? He didn't say, oh, I just don't understand. What are we going to do? But no, he already knew. And so as the disciples were making their way and trying to figure out amongst themselves what, what was going to go on, they were looking for something that was complete that they could distribute. My friends, sometimes in our vast picture of looking at things, we're looking for something that's already finished to give. Not really realizing that God is the one who completes he's the one who distributes fully and so as the disciples were sitting there and all of a sudden uh, Simon Peter's brother Andrew he says well there's a young boy that's got five loaves and two fish and what's his comment what are these among so many and so all of a sudden we find that Jesus says go and get them and he tells the people to sit down there was a great multitude. You know, if you've studied any at all, this 5,000 is just the men, and there was also women and children present. So it's between, some say, ten to 15,000 people there. Now that's, that's a sure enough crowd, amen? But as I begin to read through, and after all of this was distributed out, and it says, and they ate all they wanted... Jesus makes this comment and he says gather up the fragments so that nothing is lost my friend and today as we present the gospel we want to give out full loaves and we don't want to gather back up the fragments but my friend there's a lot of fragment people that are sitting in this audience tonight that are broken have been broke apart and there are only a half at this point my friend they, Jesus said, gather them up so that no one, nothing is lost is what the scripture says. So I want you to understand something this afternoon and tonight. I want you to leave out of here gathering fragments up, my friend. I want you to gather up. And when I say gather up, that means that you go and you love on them. And you show them Jesus Christ so that nothing is lost. Because that's what's going on today. We, we miss the fragments. We miss the fragments because we don't think they account for anything. My friend, if they didn't account for anything, Jesus wouldn't have told his disciples to go pick up the fragments. He would have said, leave them for the birds. But my friend, he gathered them up and he said, so that nothing is lost. Today we're, we're about going out and telling people about Jesus as long as they look like me. I'm all right with that. I'm okay with that. As long as they attend a certain denomination of church, I'm okay with that. I'm okay until they don't look like me. 
that's a fragment over there and I, I don't want no part of that fragment over there you don't know where it's been you don't know who pinched off of that fragment right there so let's just leave it over here to the side my friend Jesus said gather all the fragments so that nothing is lost see that's the problem we're, we're not gathering fragments today we want to gather in the whole ones Jesus said that he didn't come to heal the righteous to call them he said he came to heal the sick the ones that was in need of a physician they were broken they were pulled apart they weren't complete and they'll only be complete when you give them Jesus that's the only way a person is ever complete is when you give them Jesus are you gathering fragments this really nailed me to the wall this nailed me worse how'd you walk because I began to look around and I began to say hey if I'm at my home church man I, I, I can come up to any of y'all I can talk to you about Jesus it's not a problem there but it's when I get outside and all of a sudden there's fragments lay, 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 laying over here at the truck stop oh I got one it's breaking my heart I drove off and left a fragment standing at a truck stop because I was too busy had to get to the next place where there was a revival going on and the Lord speaking to me the whole time brother Johnny and I pushed that air brake and I released that thing and I put it in D and I began to think you know what that D stood for is you just doomed that fragment right there and I pulled off and this guy's watching me standing there worked in that fuel station backed up against there with a sad look God already had spoken to me and I didn't stop church I see his face every day every day if I sat in that driver's seat and I look to the left out that window that's kind of smoked up I see that man standing there broken pulled apart he was a fragment but he wasn't a whole loaf so I don't want to fool with him you know I don't know what he'll what will happen Jesus said gather all the fragments so that nothing is lost church it's time that we can start gathering the fragments up we start gathering them up because my friend when we start gathering them up guess what they become whole pieces again Amen. they be whole because Jesus said I can, I can restore I can put back together the disciples, they didn't understand this. And, and they looked amazed, I'm sure, as they distributed those loaves. And they would pull them apart and somebody would take some. They'd pull it apart and somebody would take some. They'd pull it apart and somebody would take some. And they begin to walk their way and they begin to distribute over and over and over and over. And they begin to make their way. And Jesus said, gather all that nothing is lost nothing is lost I don't want no more people out my left side of my window as I drive off I don't want no more fragments left behind if you begin to examine yourself there's, you're going to find that God's going to reveal some fragments in your life you're going to begin to see some fragments that happened in your life and you're beginning, God's going to draw them back to your attention again because of the fact that sometimes we think we're just a little too good to talk to that individual. Sometimes we feel like that they're not good enough. We was in prison down at Darlene down at Bayou Door Cheap. Those men will come in. They'll come in broken. Broken apart. A fragment. Yearning for something. Yearning for somebody to put them back together. 
Oh yeah, we can stand up there and we can have a fired up service and we can sing the fast songs and clap the hands and stand up and do all of that. But my friend, it's not about how well we sing. It's not about how fast the song is. It's about Jesus Christ and what he can do. Jesus Christ is in the restoration business. He's the, he, he's the restorer. He's the one who can put it back together again. He's the one, he's the glue. Hello? He's the one that holds it together once it's put back together. Amen? Without him, you'll fall apart, church. And we'll look at those men as they're sitting there. And I, there's faces. And you can ask John and Ashley and Penny and Stephen. There's faces that are glued to you. Their eyes throughout the service. And, and they're glued to you. And they're watching you. And they're saying, oh, if I just had what they had. That's the time that you go say, let me... Do you know Jesus? Because that's the difference. I'm no different from you except I know Jesus. I met him as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus says, gather all the fragments so that nothing's lost. It's time that we got our basket out, church, and we start gathering up those fragments. It's time that we start picking them up. It doesn't matter. This fragment may have a little dirt on it, Pick it up, put it in the basket. This one over here, a bird might have been over here nibbling on it, but it's, pick it up. God said, gather it all so that nothing is lost. And I'm finding out that you don't know what that fragment, that person, do you know what that person means to our Lord and our Savior? He said, I would that none should perish that all would come to a saving knowledge. He just didn't die for you, but he died for all. Amen. See, sometimes we want to play God. Well, they don't look like, they don't act like they should. They don't act like the way that I think they ought to. They don't talk like the way that, oh, he said gather all the fragments. Gather them all so that nothing is lost. I want you to understand, it's time. Jesus is coming. I've heard it all of my life, but guess what? It's one day closer today. And if you halfway have a brain, you can read the scripture and you can find out the time that we're living in. See, you can, you can try to say, oh no, it's just, it's just, no. The word of God is very true is what it says it says by these signs you'll know how many of you got up and saw the blood moon the other night how many of you have ever seen a blood moon before see that's a sign oh you can say well it's happened because this and it happened because that and you can reason it away but my friend you, you got to understand. Go to the book of Joel and read. You'll find. See, it's time we get busy. It's time that we quit picking and choosing. Oh, well, this one, I like this one right here. So I put it in my basket. Oh, this one over here looks, oh, man, it's, it's still got, it kind of looks fresh. I'm going to put it in my basket. No, it's time that we gather them all the fragments in. It's time that we get busy. It doesn't matter about the color of their skin. It doesn't matter about their last name. It doesn't matter about the car that they drive, the house that they live in, or the income that they produce. What matters is the soul that is with inside of them because my Savior died for that soul. And it's time we get busy, church. It's time. See, because there's some young people that are sitting in here tonight. They're watching. They're watching you. And they're watching me. And if we pick and choose, guess what they're going to do? Jesus said, gather all the fragments so that nothing is lost.
Verse 13 says, And therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of five barley loaves which were left over by those who were eating. You want to know how to make a church grow? Gather some fragments. Go and get them. Go and get them and bring them in. Go and pick them up. Bring them in. Gather 12 baskets off of five barley loaves which had done fed thousands it's called God's math Amen. see God loves he sent his son for you he sent his son for me and I'm going to tell you church I promise you from this day forward I'm going to gather fragments I'm going to pick up fragments even though I might not want to get over here where this fragment is at but if God says you get over and grab that fragment I'm going to get over here it might not be the most comfortable place but I'm going to grab that fragment and I'm going to gather it up it might not be in some foreign country we pick on Stephen a lot he just has that look <laughs> he says sometimes <laughs> He's got, I've asked him about well, what do you think about going to overseas to do some mission work? He says, I don't know. You know what I have to say? I don't know either. But God says, gather fragments. Gather them up. He didn't say you, you gather them right here on Flower Acres Street. He said, go out, compel them the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. And sometimes those fragments, church, they're not going to look like us. They're not going to act like us. But what's the price of a soul worth? What is the price of a soul? Priceless. Do you know of anybody that you would want to condemn them to hell? That you would want to send them to the torment? It says where the worm dieth not. There's gnashing of teeth. Brimstone. Eternal torment. You got some fragments on your mind? You got some fragments that God's placed on your heart right now? See, if we get serious, and I'm talking about we, I'm talking about me, get serious about these fragments, guess what? There wouldn't have been an empty seat in this house tonight. Because we'd have been more concerned about getting somebody that's lost to church than we would have been about worrying about what time is supper. Oh gosh, man, I got off from work and I didn't even have time to go home and take a shower. We'd have been more concerned about getting that person and saying, you got to come and go. I'll come get you. And I'm talking about me. It's talking about me as well. See, there's been a lot of folks that's passed by us today. Some folks say, well, you're an evangelist. That's your job. That's what you do. Huh. You are too. You are too. We just have a different call. Still serve the same master. What fragments is he telling you to get? And here's, here's the mindset. Okay, yep, I, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go call John tonight. Well, I got his answering machine. That's good enough. I tried. What happened to getting in your car and going knocking on his door? Well, he might get mad. Would you rather him to burn in hell or get mad at you? That's just reality. It's 
time that we pick up some fragments, put them in the basket so that nothing is lost. You know, the, I sure wanted to preach some happy message tonight. This is two nights in a row. The Lord has thrown these out at me. I wanted one of these happy when get healed and everything's good. But my friend, the truth of the matter is until we gather the fragments and put them into the basket, our Father is saying there's work to be done. Gather it all so that nothing is lost, David. Gather them all up. Put them in the basket. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care who they are. Gather them up. Put them in the basket so that nothing is lost. What is God speaking to you about tonight? Nothing lost. Have you got family members at home tonight that are sitting at home right now that are lost? Are they worth putting in your basket? Are they worth you making sure that they know Jesus? Are they worth that to you? Well, you know when we talk about religion, they all get mad. Well, quit talking about religion and talk about Jesus. Amen. See, religion is send folks to hell, church. But when you talk about Jesus and what he's done in your life, see, that's one of the problems we've got today. Folks say, well, I can't talk about him. Well, you probably can't because you don't know him. But once you meet him, guess what? You can't hide it under a bushel basket. You're going you're gonna to shout it out. You're going to tell somebody, aren't you? There's a smile that comes about you and you're like, well, what are you smiling for? You, you just cut your finger off. Well, bless God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> There's just things that happen. You know, the day that went up and uh, had to pay for the transmission on the bus, I was sitting there and I was talking to the service guys and I was just talking about the Lord and I said, man, it's just awesome what God can do. And one of the guys, his dad was an evangelist for years and I don't think this guy right right now was following the Lord at all. Uh, if he did, I didn't know that the Lord started dipping snuff. You know, uh, he you know he was talking about God and how good God was, and he well, just got kind of dipped in his mouth, you know, and, and all this kind of stuff. And I, I wasn't, you know, that's. But anyway, that's another subject on another night. But and I began to just share about what God had done. And as I wrote out that check for ten thousand one hundred and ninety dollars, brother Johnny. You know what come to mind was a month ago that money wasn't in that account. Amen. And I, I began to share that with them and I said, they said, How, do you charge when you go? And I said, no. I said, we travel on a love offering basis. He said, what do you mean a love offering? I said, we travel on faith. He said, what are you talking about? I said, I trust the Lord. Yeah, I understand that, but how, how, how did you get the money and everything? I said, God. He said he'd supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And it, he said, I don't understand. I said, it's Jesus Christ. And I told him I would serve him and go wherever he says to go. But how'd the money get into your account? And I said, Jesus, that's how. And he walked away scratching his head. The next day when I come back, he said, how are you doing? I said, man, I'm doing great. He said, I've been thinking about that. He said, I got it. I said, well, good. I said, what'd you get? He said, I understood what you was talking about. He said, you sing and preach. And I said, yes, sir. He said, that's the reason. I said, no, sir. I just said, because he's my Savior and he's my Lord. And he's my daddy. And he said he'd take care of me. I don't want no fragments no more. I don't want to leave them behind. I want, I want to pick them all up so that none's lost. Do you have a desire for the lost church? Do you have a burning desire that when you are so tired at the end of the day and you're physically exhausted and you think that there's nothing else 
that you could possibly do and all of a sudden does God place somebody on your heart and you fall on your face and you begin to cry out to them? I'm talking about a burning desire for the lost. He said, gather all the fragments that nothing is lost. If you don't have a desire for the lost to tell somebody about Jesus, why don't you ask God to burden you? It'll change your life. It'll change you from the top to the bottom. Because then you'll begin to realize it's not about you. It's about him. And what he did for you. Are you gathering fragments? Would you gather fragments now? I pray that you'll look, look at things a little bit different. Go back and read that passage of scripture again in John chapter 6. Read it and let it speak to you. See, I've read over that one verse. I've read over verse 12, no telling how many times. And this afternoon it hit me. I was sitting there across from Penny. I said, I've never seen this before. Nothing is lost. Have you ever met Jesus? Have you met him as your Lord and your Savior? If you have, he's called you to gather fragments. He's called you to go and gather them and put them in the basket so that nothing is lost. Maybe you're here tonight and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. I can tell you this much. Don't let Satan tell you you're not good enough. Don't let Satan tell you that he doesn't care about you. Don't let Satan tell you that no one in this church cares about you. Because see, if no one cared, Jesus wouldn't have said, gather up all the fragments so that nothing is lost. Because when you find who said that in the Bible, it was Jesus. Have you met him as Lord and Savior of your life? I'm talking a life-changing Lord and Savior where he came into your life and he touched you and he changed you because you asked him to come in and to forgive you of your sins and to save you. See, once that happens, you'll never, 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 never be the same. You'll never look at things the same way. You'll never look at people the same way. In our bus, and a lot of times in my pocket, I'll have this little marble with an eye on it. Years ago, Penny, she asked me, she said, when y'all are up singing, do you see eyes or do you see souls? And I have that in my pocket a lot of times. I didn't put it in my pocket tonight. It's, it's in my blue jeans that I had on. And I'll reach in there and I'll feel that. And remind me. Each one of us here tonight has a soul. And that soul is going to spend eternity somewhere. Heaven or hell. And that soul is worth a lot. It's priceless. Because Jesus died for you. And he died so that you could have eternal life if you would accept him as your Lord and as your Savior. So tonight, you've got a choice to make. If you've met Jesus and you have a personal relationship with him and he, he's your Lord and your Savior, you, you've got a choice to make. You've got to choose to pick up some fragments. Each one of us. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've got a choice tonight to either accept Him as Lord and Savior or to walk out of here and accept the life that you're living, which is a straight road to hell without Jesus.
what's it going to be? Would you bow your heads? You're here tonight and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And right now, the Holy Spirit is dealing with you. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. He's knocking on your heart's door. And he's saying, ask me to come in. Invite me and I'll save you. Invite me. He's waiting on you. If that's you, right there where you're at. See, he can hear a whisper all the way to heaven because he's listening to your heart. If that's you, I'd be honored to, to lead you in a prayer, but I want to make it very clear, me standing here praying will not save you. It's you praying and you asking the Lord to come into your life and to forgive you of your sins and you recognizing that he died and he rose again and it's you asking Jesus to forgive you and to save you. And I'd be honored to lead you in a prayer. And if that's you, you pray in faith, believing, asking the Lord. Doesn't matter what your age is. Doesn't matter if you're a member of a church. See, because being a member of a church doesn't save you. Jesus does. So right there where you're at, if that's you tonight and you know that you're lost and you're in need of a Savior, why don't you pray and ask Him right now, dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose again. And right now, you're in heaven. Lord Jesus, would you come into my life and forgive me of my sins? Lord Jesus, save me. Thank you for saving my soul. Now I want to live the rest of my life serving you. Now if you prayed that prayer in faith and you asked the Lord to save you, I'm going to ask you just to get up out of your chair, make your way down here. We're going to pray. We're going to rejoice about what God is doing in your life. If you ask the Lord to save you tonight and you meant business with Him and you prayed in faith and you asked Him, if that's you tonight, why don't you just get up and make your way down, down here. We're going to celebrate. We're going to rejoice about what God has done. Now, church, there's a lot of fragments that are out there. We've got to get busy. We've got to get busy because, see, Satan wants to come along. He wants to steal that fragment and carry it off. And they're right in front of you. What are you going to do? Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for its truth. Now, Lord, I know you've spoken to hearts tonight, and there are people that are in need tonight, God. I pray we'd be obedient. And, Lord, that you would... Convict our hearts of these fragments, Lord, that are all around and that, and that we would get busy about picking them up so that none are lost. Lord, have your way. And Lord, if there is someone here that's hurting tonight, Lord, that's in need of a touch from you, God, I pray that they would make their way to you. Lord, you are just as the song that we sung Lord, you are that healer. Lord, you're that same healer that healed as a paralytic was healed in Jesus' time. And Brother Billy, in that second verse, Lord, you're the same right now. Lord, if there's someone here that's just hurting, that's broken, Lord, you are the one that puts us back together. I pray we'd be obedient to do what you would have us to do. In Jesus' name. Would you stand? If you need to come, I pray you'd come tonight. Maybe you just need to get in this altar that God has spoken to you about some crumbs. 
some broken crumbs that are out there that need to be picked up. Has God spoken to you about that? You be obedient. He said that, that nothing is lost. Now we can set and we can continue to be the same, the same. But guess what? Some are going to get lost. What are you willing to do? Church, what are you willing to do? Oh, it's going to be uncomfortable sometimes. Or it's going to be sometimes maybe not what you even want to do. He needs that nothing is lost. one of those crumbs that the fragment that's out there may be broken down they may be broken to pieces church and they're looking at you they're looking at you to see oh you look like you're a whole loaf that you're completely put together that you've got it going on but my friend if you walk away, God has placed them on your heart and on your life to go speak to them and to share. And you walk away, guess what? You're just as broken as they are. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Would you come tonight? Be honored to pray with you. Whatever the Lord is speaking to you about. fragments might be a family member. Might be a family member that has been broken apart over something. And you might be just the one that will come along and pick them up. Then you'd be that one. They're just waiting for somebody to pick up that fragment in their basket. fragments all around.
that one fragment, that one that you've left behind so many times. Oh, you know the one that I'm talking about, that individual that God placed on your heart over and over and over to go to. Go to them. Go to them that, and say, God sent me to you. He loves you. And you're worth it all. Fragments. Has God placed a fragment on your heart tonight? Someone Maybe one, two, three, or four, five. Maybe it's a whole family that he's placed upon your heart tonight. Go get them. Gather them so that nothing is lost. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, you do it.
come up here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <coughs> For all that you've done, I will thank you for all that you're going to do. For all that you promised and all that you are is all that has carried me through. Jesus, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for loving and setting me free. Thank you for giving your life just for me. How I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Gratefully thank you. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just we just praise you for the opportunity to come into your house tonight, Lord. We just we just love you so much, Lord, for for not leaving these fragments on the wayside. Lord, I just thank you for for calling us into your into your body. Lord, we just we just stand in awe of all that you are for us, Lord, and all that you do for us on a daily basis, Lord. Lord, I just pray that everyone here will, Lord, just go around and pick up those fragments, Lord, this tomorrow and the rest of this week. Lord, that they can bring others to the knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I just ask a blessing upon each and every one of them here tonight. Lord, be with the sick. and Lord, be with those serving in the military. Lord, just forgive us where we fail you, and Lord, forgive us where we fail each other. And it's all this. Ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I hope you enjoyed that service. And if God spoke to you during that service, and you've realized that you need a Savior, and that you're lost and undone, and why don't you call out to the Lord? He's just waiting to hear from you. He already knows. And you know as well as anybody if the Holy Spirit is drawing you. And right where you're at, you can call upon him. See, God can hear a whisper all the way to heaven from right where you're at because he sees your heart. 
why don't you ask him to come in and be your Lord and Savior, to forgive you of your sins? He's waiting on you, but it's something that you have to do. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, then you don't have a personal relationship. But that's what it takes. That's what it takes to know Jesus Christ is a personal relationship. So if that's you and you, you would like to receive Jesus into your heart and start this relationship, I'd ask you to pray with me. But pray in faith, believing that he'll save you. And he says he'll do just that. So why don't you pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that you died for me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose again. And right now, you're in heaven. Lord Jesus, I'm lost. And I need you to save me. Forgive me of my sins and come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Now I want to live the rest of my life serving you. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer in faith and asked the Lord to save you, I want to be the first to tell you that you're saved. And that you're on your way to heaven if you prayed that prayer in faith and believed and asked God. We'd like to hear from you. You can contact us at thecrusaders-ministries.com. You can find us on Facebook. Send us a message. Or give me a call, 870-904-3118. We'd like to find out where you're at and get you involved in a local church, try to help you. Start your walk with Jesus Christ in a positive way. But we're excited what God has done. And we look forward to hearing from you. And if you'd like to partner with the Crusaders, you can become a seed partner by sowing a seed and meeting a need. We're a 501c3. We're a nonprofit organization. You can go to our website, thecrusaders-ministries.com, and you can... Give safe and secure there. You can give a one-time tax deductible donation or you can set it up to do monthly and it can just come straight out of your account. Whatever it is that God has placed upon your heart, I pray you'd be faithful to do that. And of course, if you have any questions or concerns, you can contact me, David, at 870-904-3118. Thank you again for watching this service and I pray it was a blessing to you. And God bless you.